Tiamat's Wrath by James S.A. Corey. The first book I've finished of the year. And they say, stars you mean to go on. Well, um, I loved this. So that's a good sign, right? Uh, not that there was ever any doubt that I would, but yeah. So this is the eighth book of The Expanse and it's currently the final one to be published. Um, I've heard there's going to be, well, there's definitely going to be a book nine based on how this ends, but I've heard maybe this year, I'm, I'm like hoping, I'm crossing all my fingers because I like really need to know how they um, survive, <laughs> defeat the ultimate bad guys. Um, yeah, that said, I loved this book and it's hard to talk about it because, you know, it's book eight of a series, but um, a lot of stuff happened in this. I really liked all of it. I thought, like, Naomi especially, I thought was really interesting in this one. I'm also incredibly depressed. If you've read the book, you know why. But, um, you know, we, we can't... You know, whatever. Whatever, James. Whatever. But, um, I'm just being very vague, but, like, I'm sad. However, I'm also happy. I also really liked it. I liked that, I also really liked that, um, L.V. Okoye is in this again. She was the scientist from the fourth book. Yeah, the fourth book, uh, when they're on the other planet. So she's in this again, and she's great. I love her. Um, of course, a lot of time has passed, so that's cool. Um... Yeah, it's just, I don't know how it's all gonna come to a conclusion, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how it does. And there's some just really scary and fascinating stuff in this and some disturbing stuff. And like, I'm just really, I just really love the series. And as far as I know, book nine is gonna be the last one and I'm pretty depressed about that. Gonna have to find something to fill the void. But, um, I, there's a number of science fiction or fantasy series that I've been wanting to read that I've been kind of putting off, I guess, because I, I sort of felt like I was busy reading The Expanse, and now it's like, well, no, I'm not, so it's time to read the Broken Earth trilogy, for example. Um, so we're getting there, but I'm gonna drop it. Uh, yeah, that's, I think that, that about covers it. Um, but I, I think it's it's a good, strong start to the year. Hello, and Titanic's Last Secrets by Brad Mattison. Uh, finished this. It's nonfiction, it's about the Titanic, and it wasn't that great. So, uh, I picked it up see, after seeing it at the library because I, a couple years ago, I read the book Shadow Divers. It's on the cover here. And I saw this, like, from afar and was like, Shadow Divers, that was such a good book. So, this is by a different author, but I thought I, it's about, this, but it's about the same people. Okay, so Shadow Divers, oh my god. Shadow Divers is a book about a couple of deep sea Atlantic wreck divers who find a U-boat that is sunk out off the shore of New Jersey and they figure out which U-boat it is. And it's like a really good book with a lot of stuff about diving and about U-boats and I don't know, it's fantastic. So I was like hoping for something similar and I didn't get it. Um, I mean, it wasn't a terrible book, this thing, but um, it was definitely not a favorite. Uh, I thought I didn't like his writing style. It was just way too simplistic. Um, I just, yeah, it just it was annoying to read. He did this weird thing where in some scenes he would use quotation marks and in other scenes he wouldn't. And I'm guessing it's because he was quoting people directly when he would use them, but it was still just a really weird thing. 
that I didn't like. And then, um, a huge chunk of this book is set, like, when the Titanic was being built. I wanted more about the divers and their attempt to figure out exactly why the Titanic sunk. Which they do get some new information, but, like, most of the book is not about them doing that. Uh... That said, it's an interesting subject. I kind of didn't know why the Titanic sank, I guess, because you always just hear, well, the whole thing about all the waterproof bulkheads and the compartments filling up with water. But, um, sort of the, the interesting thing has to do with the, the strength of the rest of the ship and answering the question of at what point did it break apart, because it was believed that it was a strong enough ship that it didn't break apart until it sank, until after it sank. But they found evidence that says that it wasn't a strong ship and that it actually probably broke apart on the surface. Which meant, means just, I think, ba basically that the deaths of all those people were just that much worse. So, um, it, so you know what, it was interesting, but I was not a big fan of how it was written and it was not all that I hoped it, hoped it would be. So, um, I'm, yeah, it, it wasn't, it wasn't great. It was not great, but, um, you know, trying to finish the books that I started in December, and this was one of them, so, go me, I finished it. Now I never have to read it again. <laughs>
I mean, I guess the most interesting thing about it was just like that it's set in Lagos and that um, kind of affects how the aliens and the things that happen like go down basically because other countries, other cities would have reacted differently maybe. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it, it was interesting, but I just don't know why it didn't really work for me as well as I wanted it to. Um, and it's, you know, it's not just because it's set in a different country and a different culture that I know very little about. Like, that's probably part of it, but I don't know. I just feel like I kind of didn't follow character arcs or the plot. I mean, I knew it was happening, but like it didn't have as much of an impact on me as I would have liked. I don't know. Maybe it's just like a variety. Like uh, one of the things is the aliens have just the ability to basically give people and the animals in the ocean is where it starts, what they want. And so it's kind of cool because all of the different fish and stuff are kind of transforming into kind of like monsters almost because they want to be able to do certain things. But also, I don't know, I guess there's this part of me that always expects a story like that to go, but you can't just give people everything they want because everything will go to shit. I don't know. I was just like, I don't like these aliens, you know, like, what are they doing here? Why are they giving humanity technology? Why is this the way they're going about it? Um, I don't know. I liked some stuff. I liked the different, Ni I think, Nigerian, like, gods or legends or whatever who kind of sh are, like, manifested by the end and show up and do stuff. That was cool. I liked the, um, the bone collector kind of, the, 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 the highway that so many people have died on kind of gaining, like, sentience. Um, I don't know, I just feel like there was stuff in here that would have worked, but it didn't quite, and I wish it had. And I definitely want to read more by her. Um, I, did she write? I think there's another series of sci-fi books that she wrote that I want to read. I don't know. But, um, I'm, you know, more, I'm more, What's the word? I have good feelings about that, I guess. Um, but yeah, this was interesting, but maybe a little disappointing. I don't know, maybe part of it's just the writing style. I don't know, I mean, it is. There was, I don't know, I don't know. <clears throat> I kind of felt like there were characters who sh did things and were going places and then just like either just died or just left and the book ended and I was like, what so that's kind of i don't know kind of disappointing but but certainly not bad and um you know it was interesting so meh <laughs>
but it'll just show up out of nowhere and kill people. And a religion formed around it with the first, like, colonists who came uh, to Hyperion some, I don't know, some centuries before. And um, it's called the Shrike Cult. And they worship it and they call it the God of Pain. Or the, wait, the Lord of Pain. I guess it's not really a god. It doesn't matter. But, um, and that's why there's this pilgrimage. You travel from the capital city to this place called the Time Tombs in order to entreat the Shrike for a gift. And the idea is that he'll either kill you or he'll grant it. And I don't know if it, the gift has ever been granted to anybody. I'm not entirely sure that it has, but a lot of people have died. But this is supposed to be like the last pilgrimage because the time tombs are mysteriously opening. And the time tombs have this whole entropic field and it's like very strange. And they seem, and some people have realized that they seem to be traveling backwards in time. And there's a lot. So the pilgrims are all stranger to each other. But as they're traveling, they tell each other their stories. And it's a little bit Canterbury Tales, except the stories are about them and, you know, and how they are connected to Hyperion and why they've come here. And they're all fascinating. Like, this book is, is just like, here are a bunch of extremely weird sci-fi short stories that are all set in the same universe, um, told by these various characters who are all quite different. Um, it's very weird. And, uh... It's kind of wonderful. I, yeah, I mean, I liked it. Like, there was a lot, there were things about this that were annoying, absolutely. Like, it has, you know, it has some of the sexism that you expect in a slightly older sci-fi book. Not as much as, like, a book from the 40s or, the, or even the 60s, but, you know, it's still kind of like, ugh. Only one of the pilgrims is a woman. She's not always treated that great by the narrative. I don't know. I mean, she does have an interesting story like everybody else, but, um, I just kind of was annoyed by some of the stuff, but like for the most part, it's okay. It's just kind of a minor complaint, I guess. Um, let's see. Uh, gosh, it, it is really interesting. There are so many various threads in this book. Like, we learn so much, not just about Hyperion and its history and its just place and the parts of it and the people there, but also we learn a lot about several other planets. We learn about, like, um, the hegemony, which is the kind of the connected group of planets that humans have colonized. And there's a whole thing about what they've done to do that and what's been covered up and who's in charge of what and there's a lot of stuff about AI and a lot of it is very it kind of as the book goes on you realize this is all pretty fucked up and there are a lot of threads of just things that we don't quite know or things that like the hegemony has done to maintain itself or things that we probably shouldn't be trusting um to remain safe um, and then the ending. So this book has sequels. It's part of a series. I don't know if I'm going to continue it. I might at some point, but I kind of went into it assuming that it would be a little bit more closed, like, like Dune was. Okay, like I read Dune. Yes, Dune has a zillion sequels that I have not read and have no interest in reading, but I feel like Dune ends on a note where you're like, this is a conclusion for Dune itself, and you're like, I understand this, and yes, obviously, more can continue on from this, but, like, it's still an ending. This one, not as much. Like, okay, spoilers for the ending time. This ends with all the characters reaching the time tombs. They've all told their stories. They've all kind of realized that... Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. And they travel towards the tombs together. And it's actually kind of a wonderful moment where they all... It's hard to describe because it's going to sound silly. But it works in the book. <laughs> I promise. But where they all kind of put aside almost their differences and 
come together to approach their destiny side by side and in sort of this this positive way because one of the characters has his has a baby with him and he's singing to her a little bit and they're like what is the song and they kind of start singing it together the ones who know it and it at first I was like whatever song this is it's gonna be silly and it is a bit silly but it's kind of sweet it's one of the songs from Wizard of Oz I think I think the Yellow Brick Road song that the because because they all as they're singing it they come together and they like stand next to each other and kind of hold hands and link arms which is what they do in the movie you know but anyway most of these characters don't even know what this cultural reference is but it's like kind of sweet but like I I think the part that kind of got me like oh there's a purpose to this is when the character of Kassad who, who is coming there very military get up and he he wants to kill the Shrike is his goal um he shoulders his weapon and he puts up his his like visor thing and he joins in this and I was like it's just kind of a moment of them all putting aside their I guess goal for the Shrike and coming together to to face it together I don't know it's really I cannot explain it I thought it worked really well however I also was like this is it I was expecting you know to find out <laughs> what was gonna happen once they met the Shrike and we don't because it just ends there before they've met him and like maybe that's the point I don't know there was some stuff about religion in this book and obviously real religions as well as fake ones like the Shrike Temple and like <laughs> I guess the Shrike represents something I don't know so I okay I think overall a positive feeling um, oh god. You can really see that light from my computer, can't you? Um, uh, yes. So I would say overall a positive feeling. Um, I'm just, like, a little disappointed that we don't know what's gonna happen next, which is probably part of the point. But it also makes me wonder, if it's the point, how is there a sequel? What is the sequel about? Does it tell us what happens to these people? Does it just not? Because I'm just like, wouldn't a sequel that immediately tells us what happens kind of undermine any point that this ending might have had? Or would it? I don't know. I don't know that, I don't know if you can have both, but okay. Maybe I will read the next book at some point. I think the library actually has it on, on audio as well, but um, for now, uh, that's Hyperion. So that's, that's kind of it. I'm glad I read it. It was interesting. It has a incredibly cool cover. Like these are trees. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is the Shrike, obviously. Yeah. So I don't know. It just I had a lot of really cool ideas, and I really enjoyed it.